In today's video, we are gonna be actually helping someone out with Adobe Audition. They're doing a specific action in Audacity and trying to replicate that same exact, I guess, skill inside of Adobe Audition. Can we help her out? You'll have to find out. Stay tuned. Podcasting, training and development. Hey there, podcaster. My name is The Shan Man, radio broadcaster, podcaster, and a podcast producer. And of course, I am your podcast therapist. If you have not had a chance to check out my brand new podcast, what are you waiting for? You need to go on over there and subscribe. Wherever you get your podcast, that's where you need to go. Just go look up The Podcast Therapist. I'll leave a link for the podcast down in the description below, or of course, you probably can see it on your screen right now of where you need to go. Just go to thepodcasttherapist.com slash podcast, and you can find out where you can listen. But it's a really great podcast podcast for learning a little bit more about what my experience brings into the podcasting world and how it can help you. It gives you a, a kind of a taste of what uh, my method and style and philosophy is when it comes to podcasting, whether it's creating creating content, whether it is developing different pieces of audio for branding, whatever it may be, this podcast is going to be for you. We really break down the nuts and bolts of not only what's going on on the inside of your head and the strategy that's going to go into your podcast, but outside, of course, what is going on inside of your head too. So go over there and subscribe to the Podcast Therapist. So in today's video, we are gonna be helping someone out in a an audition tutorial. And this actually is a video, what we're going to be showing here very shortly. It's a video from Steph Fuccio. She is a podcaster, uh, podcaster, she's the podcast host of uh, the Geopats podcasting podcast. And how I got alerted to her video was by my friend, uh, sh my friends Shankar and Vishnu of the Writer and Geek podcast. And what happened was that Steph posted this question or inquiry on Instagram. She was having trouble with the same type of action that she was doing in Audacity. So to break it down just real simply, she was silencing a piece of audio inside of Audition, I'm sorry, inside of Audacity and trying to replicate the exact same type of action inside of Audition. In this video, I wanna show you not only her video of what she is struggling with because you might be experiencing the same exact thing and then we'll jump into my tutorial and show you how and why I create a very similar action inside of Adobe Audition. So let's check out Steph's video right now. Okay, so there's something that I like to do in Audacity when I'm editing two tracks that I can't find or that doesn't exist in Adobe Audition. And I've been trying to describe it in words and it's not working. So I'm making a quick video to show you what I mean. So these are two mono tracks this is me and this is my guest. This is me and this is my guest. And so this part here is where we have overlap in our com in our talking. And this overlap isn't laughing. It's not building on this. I'm, I'm starting a sentence and she's coming in. And what she's saying is more important, so I'm gonna silence me. So in this waveform view, if we're using Adobe Audition Speak, I can silence that by using Control L and I'm just in the same view, so I can do it at the same time. So what I usually do my first pass of a multi-track session is I will go through and I will check at just any time that there's overlap between both of us talking, and I'll see if it needs to stay there or if I need to get rid of it. And if I need to get rid of it, I'll silence it. And I'll just go to, like now I'll skip to here and I'll look at this. And then I'll skip to here, and this is probably me making a weird noise, and I'll, I'll probably silence that. And so I don't actually listen to the conversation in the first pass. I'll look at all the times that there's overlap between when we're speaking, and I'll decide which ones need to stay and which one don't. I won't listen to any of this because there's no overlap. This will just, I'll just pass that by. And like these, I'll probably silence all of this. So I'll just clean it up a bit, but I'm doing it just in the waveform view. Again, this part right here, I'll probably listen to this whole bit and see which part needs to stay and which doesn't. If there's like mutual laughter or there's words that we're playing off of each other or we say the same thing at the same time, I'm keeping it in because that's engagement. That's beautiful in audio form. But if it's uh, over talking or one person's making a noise while the other person's speaking, I'm going to silence it. This is something that if I did it in Audition, Adobe Audition, I would need to move from multi-track view, which is sort of like this view, but 
it's different. <laughs> anyway, I need to move from that to the waveform view to make these changes. Now, granted, somebody told me if this was an Adobe Audition, which I don't have on this side of my computer, I can highlight it and then go to the waveform view, make the changes, then come back to the multi-track view. But in, Ado but in Audacity, I can just do it here. So that's something that I would like to do in the multi-track view. Sorry, I keep calling it view. Multi-track editor in Adobe Audition. Is this possible? Can I make changes like this without switching from multi-track view, in, in, not in Audacity, in Adobe Audition? Can I make changes and can I silence part of a track in multi-track editor without going to wave track editor and back? That ultimately is the thing that I'm missing and that I want to do in an Adobe Audition. So far, it's the only thing that I really, really, really miss. If it doesn't exist in Audition, then I'm going to need to use both of these tools, both of these jaws, because this is too much of a time saver for me not to do. I hope this makes sense. I look forward to your feedback and don't feel to break, don't feel bad breaking the news to me. It doesn't exist in Audition. I'm almost positive it doesn't. Uh, and who knows, maybe after I keep switching back and forth between multi-track and waveform editor, I will even forget this exists. But right now, it's painfully clear to me how many more steps it is in, aud uh, in Audition than it is in Audacity. Um, both DAWs do have their advantages, I'm sure. I just uh, had such a hard time with Audacity crashing and doing things that was just not time efficient that I didn't explore as much as I am able to over on Adobe Audition. So I didn't really spend as much time here. I just pretty much came in, did what I needed to do and left. Okay, so Steph's got a really great question there. Now, before we jump into this, I wanna let you know all about Buzzsprout. Buzzsprout has helped me launch my podcast as far as being a hosting provider. The Podcast Therapist is completely hosted on this platform, and when I went into the process of looking for different podcast hosts, Buzzsprout was the one that beat everyone out because they had certain features that was that I was really psyched about when it came down to uh, putting my podcast or having a podcast home. One of those features being the chapter function inside of Buzzsprout. I can go into the piece of audio after I've uploaded a podcast episode and set chapters into different parts of the podcast audio so that it shows up on the player itself for people who are listening who can skip around and skip to different chapters. There are many other features inside of Buzzsprout that I think that you will like. The analytics are easy to read. The upload process is very simple and it's all step-by-step -step and easy to use with Buzzsprout. If you wanna get started with Buzzsprout today, you can go ahead and check out my affiliate link right now on the screen, shanman.tips slash get Buzzsprout. You can try it for free for 90 days and if you like it, you can go ahead and jump into a plan and get started with making an amazing podcast. Podcast. Okay, so let's jump on over into Adobe Audition. And as you can see, here's the multi-track editor. And it's very similar, looks pretty similar to what you would see in Audacity. But there are more bells and whistles here. And uh, I would not let Adobe Audition intimidate you. There, there's just a lot more flow that works here. As Steph mentioned, um, Audacity tends to crash at certain times. You could do much more inside of Adobe Audition. So what Steph's problem is, is that she's trying to clean up the audio where people are stepping on each other, okay? So as an example of what we're trying to do, we'll take our own piece of audio here. And this is from a podcast I edited over a year ago. And I've labeled this track right here as the host. This is the host voice track. So we'll just call this host VO. And then here we have the guest VO as well. So you can name the guest VO or whatever the person's name is, all right? And you're pretty much set to go. You can click on each track just as you could in Audacity. Now, where Steph is trying to make these edits is that she's talking about how if she wants to come in and make an edit on a particular track that she would have to double click, come in, and make the edit and then come back over into multi-track. And then what ends up happening is that it kind of shifts and alters everything inside of the multi-track player. So if I went ahead and I did something like this, let's go back into, uh, we'll double click back into that file and she is trying to silence this. So we could technically just silence this right here and go, okay, we're gonna silence that piece of audio and then we gotta come back into multi-track. What her issue is that she doesn't wanna have to keep double clicking, coming back up here to the corner and then coming back into the audio and just keep doing that. She wants to know if there's an easier way to do this. So there is an easier way to do this, all right? So we're gonna put that audio back to normal and we're gonna deselect it, all right? So when you come into the multi-track player, all you have to do is press the letter R. 
And the letter R is the cutting tool, or this is the razor blade tool. And when you press the razor blade tool, you're gonna see either one razor blade or you're gonna see two razor blades if you press R again. So you see two razor blades. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to actually zoom out of this right here, and we're going to, oops, that was too far. And you can see there are multiple tracks up here. There, here's actually, this track right here is one of the original tracks right here. This is what you know I was editing with and I had to fix this piece of audio. And then this is what I had done to process that audio again so that it could match up and sync up just right. But as you'll notice, if I come on over here and I press the letter R and you get the double razor blade, if I, if I click anywhere in this area where I wanna make a cut, it's going to make a cut in the same vertical direction all the way down if there's audio that is placed within a particular track. So as you can see, boom, I make a cut. This is good for bulk cuts, all right? So if you wanted to make bulk cuts, you can do that. So you just gotta kind of be careful of that, but we don't wanna make a bulk cut in this instance. We want to make a single cut. So what we're going to do is we are going to press the letter V. That is our selection tool. And uh, you're gonna be using R and V a lot if you're gonna be editing inside of multi-track editor, okay? So as we can see here, and we're gonna kinda, we're gonna uh, enlarge this so we can see what's going on. Let's listen to the piece of audio and see where they're stepping on each other and then we'll make those easy cuts. You're the majority. I, I'm the majority yeah. from a fairly powerful family in Hawaii. I could yeah. not relate at all. So she steps on him right here in this particular section. Uh, hopefully you see the little radar where I click on uh, the piece of audio. This part she says, yeah, and he is talking. This might be an area where Steph wants to trim it out. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to press the letter R and I'm going to make a cut right here. And then as you can see, there are these, there's this little bracket that shows up with arrows pointing in the opposite directions. This means it's the trim tool and all you're doing is you're just trimming. So you would click and drag and then basically you would silence that if you wanted to. Now you could do it another way. You could go, all right, I'm going to make the cut and then I would make another cut and then go to my selection tool. That would be the letter V and then select it and then press delete and then that's it. You are not altering the original audio when you do this. So just kind of be aware of that. If you wanna alter the original audio, you're gonna to have to double click inside of the piece of audio and that would alter the original piece of audio. Some podcasters like to do this, they like to, to alter the original piece of audio. I don't necessarily alter the original piece of audio because I like to keep the same audio if I'm working in multi-track so that I can kind of work with people stepping on each other, or I can work with unwanted noises, things like that. But one thing you have to be aware of is that when you are playing in this type of environment, there is the possibility that you might be doing multiple selections and you might say, oh, well, I need to make a cut here. And then we're gonna press the selection cool, uh, tool and we're gonna delete. And then maybe you make another cut here. And then you're like, oh, okay, I made a cut. And then you accidentally move something or you move something up here and you take it out of sync. That is something that you have to be aware of each time. So that's just, you know, fair warning. Um, you know, you can get a little bit lost, but one of my favorite um, shortcut keys is going to be the command Z, the undo button or the control Z on a PC. That's what you're going to be able to use. So that's one way, or actually that is the way that you can do this. All right. So you can go through this entire piece of audio and you can start taking out the pieces that you don't need and select them oops, uh, select it and then delete and then just kind of keep going through if you wanted to. And then here's another one. Here's, uh, we'll go R, we'll go boom, boom, press the selection tool and just keep going and you're not really altering anything. So as you can see, this process is very simple to use. All you need to do really inside of Adobe Audition is using those shortcut keys. You need to use R and you need to use V. R of course being that, uh, that razor blade tool, Obviously, R for razor blade, right? And then, of course, V for the control uh, selection tool. So those are going to be the two keys on the keyboard that are really going to make a difference if you are editing in the multi-track view. Is there something that I missed in this particular video that maybe you want to mention inside of Adobe Audition that might help out Steph? Leave a comment down in the section below, and uh, that will really help out not only Steph, but other podcasters who come upon this particular video. Don't forget to go ahead and hit that subscribe button and hit the little bell button to get notified whenever I drop a brand new video. Videos are now coming out on Wednesdays as my podcast, The Podcast Therapist, is coming out on Tuesdays. So I, you guys get double the content for the week. You get at least a two pieces of solid content 
for the week. And again, if there's something that you want me to help you out with, if there's a video that you want to take and send to me, I want to recommend you to go ahead and reach out to me at theshanman.com or thepodcasttherapist.com. That will take you directly to my website and find a way to contact me. Thank you so much for watching this week. I really do appreciate it. And we'll be talking to you next time.